guys, Pete here with GIS Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to create a heat map in ArcGIS Pro. So I have some sample data. It's motor vehicle theft in Las Vegas, Nevada for the year 2021. I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can use the same data I'm using if you want to follow along. So as you can see, there's a lot of instances of auto theft. A lot of these points are grouped in natural clusters and overlapping, and a heat map is a great way to show some of the density. So once our feature layer is selected, we come up to feature layer in the ribbon, symbology, heat map. And for some, this could be a great way just to show that density, but we could actually change uh, the way we're showing the data, mostly through the method. So there's constant method, and then there's dynamic method. The constant method, as it says, the density definition remains the same as you zoom in and pan around the map. So the other method would be dynamic. Dynamic meaning as we move the map along, pan around, we zoom in, that scale logic is going to change. So we're always going to find the highest density area within the map. Sometimes it takes a, a little while for this to, to render. The radius is basically giving your scale the size of the, the radius around the instances. So if I adjust this to be a little bit bigger, it would be a lot smoother. And of course, if I bring it down, it'd be a little more defined. Also, we could do with a heat map, you could certainly click onto some of the clusters and get numbers of occurrences within those little buffers. Another, another method you could use aside from using the heat map, and I'll just bring in my data one more time, is to use the aggregation. So again, this is under feature layer, under drawing, and we're going to use clustering. Clustering is great whenever the, the points aren't so grouped, if they're a little more scattered, see maybe an area like this, this is a good way to see um, natural clusters and groups. And again, it'll give you a number for the number of occurrences. Now, just to show you, if I go back into the area where it's a little more dense, you know, it's dynamically going to change as I um, change the the scale, you know, zooming in, zooming out. Um, again, this is a, just another great way of uh, visualizing your data where there's a lot of occurrences. So I hope you guys found that useful. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, please like and subscribe if you find this really useful. Thank you so much for watching.